Coming up on this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society, SNES Classic Edition pre-orders went live and nobody's happy. It's dangerous to go alone, so the Nintendo Cartridge Society goes with you. Welcome to Nintendo Cartridge Society. My name is Patrick Ellis, joined as always by my co-host, Mark Mitchell. Mark, how's it going? It's going pretty good. Yeah, we got a good show today. Uh, We're going to be talking about um, news from Gamescom and the news of the Super NES Classic Edition pre-orders. And then on Thursday, we're going to be looking back on the NES Classic Edition nine months later. Uh, But for right now, Mark, let's get to the weather it's it was hot. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot in it's LA. Hot. Mm-hmm. It's it's hot in LA. Um. So we're bringing in some guest weather. My voice is cracking a lot. Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> we're bringing in some guest weather from. Help you me practiced out. it beforehand. We did. We did practice it. Now I'm choking. Uh, Kakortok. Kakortok. In Greenland. Yeah. That may not be right. Well, no, I, but we did rehearse something. <laughs> yes, we, that's what we rehearsed. <laughs> uh, it looks like uh, it is currently the middle of the night there, so it's like 39 degrees. It looks like uh, going to be temperatures in the 40s and 50s, maybe kind of sunny. When we're on the other end of that, when we're like 100 degrees, that sounds nice. Yes. But if I was actually in that temperature, I'd be like, this is too cold. Yeah, I would also say this is too cold. Uh, but right now, look... It got almost got up to 100 degrees in L.A. today. It's supposed to be 100 the next couple days. We can't really complain about the weather, though. No, you're right. There's <laughs> way worse weather going on in the world at the moment. That's true. Everyone donate to uh, whatever charities are helping out in Houston because, oh, my God. <laughs> um, all right, Mark, what have you been playing this week? So last week in our discussion of Sonic Mania, we, you helped me realize that I should have been playing as with Sonic and Tails, not yeah. just Sonic this mm-hmm. entire time. So I went back and I started a new game with Sonic and Tails. And I do it's so much easier. And not just because I have Tails with me, also just because I'm playing through the game a second time. Yeah. Or, of course. you know, like the first few zones of a game the second time. And so before like I was scraping by with three lives, maybe four lives maximum. Uh-huh. Now I'm like sitting pretty with 12 lives. Oh, and it's perfect. not that hard. Perfect. Um, so I'm really enjoying my second playthrough. I have not yet hit Hydro City Zone. So who knows if I will still be, if I will still get stuck at that boss, but I'll at least theoretically have more lives to dump on it. So. Right. Well, I, I found when I fought that Hydro City uh, Zone boss with Sonic and Tails together, that it wasn't that tough. Yeah, I think, or so specifically the Act Two boss, where you yeah. have to like an- jump up and hit him and like get out of the water while he's swirling around and everything. Uh, Tails, you know, like you jump and then Tails jumps behind you, and I mm-hmm. don't know if he gets a little more height, but it seems like he will be able to hit him even if I don't. Well, so. he d- he does seem to have like a little bit of a mind of his own. Like he will go a little bit further before like skidding back around. If that means he'll collect a few more rings for you, like. The AI on Tails is useful. And even if I am better at better at it this time through, I'm definitely still not great. Like, you know... I assumed you would be great by now. <laughs> Me too. It's very <laughs> frustrating. Uh, I also downloaded the Pokken Tournament DX demo. Yeah, I heard that you were un- unimpressed with it. Yeah, I downloaded it, did one match. So first I was like, oh, I'll go through the tutorial because it gives you the option of going through the tutorial. That tutorial is torturous. Torturous <laughs> tutorial. Yeah, I found it maddening. So I got out of it after like 30 seconds because I was like, oh, this is a nightmare. Mm-hmm. And then I played one match and I was like, yeah, this is pretty much just a fighting game. And it, so I deleted it because I never need to play it again. But what did you think? Uh, I sort of liked it. Um, it's... The the demo is incredibly limiting, right? Like you can only you can do fifteen fights, and there are only three characters unlocked, which is really like, yeah. How are you going to play through all fifteen fights if you can only ever pick between these three characters? It's and what the, it's Pikachu, Charmander, Charizard, Charizard, and then some like and Empoleon. Oh sure, gr- yeah. Uh, who's a, a giant penguin? 
But it's like, uh, yeah, like I, I want more. <laughs> I can't tell if I like the game or not. Like, um, it seems pretty simple, like kind of shallow for a fighting game. Um, but it, it doesn't have any of the, like, I was worried about it being too Tekken-y. Um, and like Tekken games are so much about like controlling space um, in like a 3D space. And I don't know, it's, it's always just like a little bit slower than I want it to be. And I feel like this conquers that. Um, I don't know if it's good enough to like get me to go in for the, the full game when it comes out. But I, I am intrigued at this point. Oh, okay. So that's a better result than I had. Oh, absolutely. I, I also, you know, some of that just comes to my general, like, non-interest in fighting games and learning the... Because, mm-hmm. like you were saying, fighting games are all, is, are all about systems yeah. and learning those systems. And I don't really have the patience for that sort of gameplay. And so even, like, there's two different... I don't know what you would call them, like, phases to yeah, that battles. Is, that is, 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 that, is that what, what they, they call them? them? Yes. <laughs> Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, geez, I just someone just made up a term. I don't know. So let's say phases. <laughs> uh, and they were. I can't even remember what they were. Yeah, they, there's like the a battle the, one, the long distance then... phase, and then like the sort of more like one on one phase, and the the like open range one, the where where you start is more of like three dimensional, and then when you get close up, that's where it's kind of like you're fighting on a single plane. Um. Yeah, and and that's like that's an interesting that's interesting to me, and I like that there are different moves that like trigger going into and getting out of them. Um, so I don't know. I I started to do some like research just to see how like generally fighting game players view this game, and I don't think it's taken too seriously. But that almost makes it a little bit more appealing for me. I don't know. I I, I may I may pick this game up. Um, I've also been playing a little bit of Beethoven, the ultimate canine caper on the Super Nintendo. Uh, this is a game based on Beethoven's second, the movie about the St. Bernard who has puppies. <laughs> um, it's a terrible game, uh, but uh, no, that's I was going to say something in its defense, but I don't have anything in its defense. It's bad. You streamed it on Facebook Live. I did stream it on Facebook Live. If you want to go over to our Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society, you can watch me play through the whole first level. <laughs> no. <laughs> we also both played a lot of the NES Classic Edition. That's right. Because we're going to be talking about it on Thursday. Right. Nine months and 20 days after mm-hmm. it was originally released. How does the thing hold up? Are we still interested in it? Do we like the games? What have you, what have you, what have you. Um, so I guess this isn't a... Uh, what, I, I didn't get a chance to play any Splatoon this week, but there was a new, um, a new map and a new weapon that were released on uh, Friday. You get a chance to jump in? I haven't yet, but it's two new maps. There's oh, one, two new maps. Yeah, there's a the Turf War map, uh-huh. and then there is one a new map for uh, Salmon Run, oh, finally. Hey. Yeah. And I gotta get back into Splatoon 2. It's a good game. It's a great game. And and you can just easily pick it up, play a couple of matches, and uh, go do something else. So. Absolutely. Uh, okay, so that's what we have and have not been playing this last week. Let's uh, get into the new releases and figure out what we might be playing next week. So today, August 29th, is Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle release day. Yay! It's kind of, the whole saga of this game is kind of crazy. Like, even before the Switch was officially revealed or announced, mm-hmm. there were rumors of a Mario and Rabbids game. Um, you know, like, people on Twitter, the writer, uh, Laura Kate Dale, mm-hmm. was one of the... Uh, people who leaked the most information about it yeah got it, to- totally beaten up by the internet right people being like that's stupid there's no way that's real over and over and then you know when it wasn't re- revealed in nintendo's like january reveal event uh she took a lot of crap for it right and and then you know when it didn't show up at uh i don't know any time before then she right. took a lot of crap for it. Because, uh, so the, the game leaked, right, a, a couple months ago, but, like, it wasn't really until E3 that it was, like, properly announced, right? Right. Yeah, it was blown out at E3, which was just a couple months ago. Right. Which is now, that's, 
crazy to think, right? That uh, we've known about this thing for basically as long as we've been a show. This is our 47th week doing this mm-hmm. show, by the way. Um, but we've been talking about this Mario Cross Rabbids game, plus Rabbids, uh, forever. And it's actually coming out. Yeah. And it is getting really good reviews. It looks really fun. Um, it looks super polished. I don't know. I We're definitely going to be picking it up. Mm-hmm. And we'll likely be having a uh, review discussion on it next week. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't really like tactical RPGs. I guess if that's what you would call this. Don't like fighting games. <laughs> don't like tactical RPGs. <laughs> I don't RPGs. really like games. <laughs> um, but uh, I'm interested to see how this one is. Because I think having to be part of the Mario family, it'll probably be a little more like focused on including everybody and not so hardcore Mm, mm -hmm. well and also it'll have that like mario coat of paint right like it's already in a style that you like um also coming out on on the same day is the the season pass um for mario plus rabbits so this is something that was just announced uh earlier this or last week i guess um and so it includes you know a New weapons for each of the characters, um, steampunk, steampunk versions of weapons. Um, and those are exclusive to people who uh, buy the season pass. Um, and then there are basically two big content drops, one in the fall and the other one uh, in, in 2018, which will have brand new story content. So this is kind of following the uh, Breath of the Wild model of DLC. Even in price, it's going to be 20 bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about this, Mark? I am not going to buy it unless I'm really taken with the game. But what about those steampunk weapons? Is it so? Yeah. Is it something where you'll have to? Is it like the Breath of the Wild where you have to buy all of it together, or can you? Will you be able to buy them separately? And then the those weapons are like bonus for doing for buying it all together. Oh, I guess I haven't seen anything that indicates that you would be able to buy any of it separately. Um, but I guess I also haven't seen anything that says. You buy it all for twenty bucks or or not. So the to answer your question, I I don't know. <laughs> uh, and though it's not strictly uh, downloadable content, Mario Plus Rabbids also has some limited amiibo support. Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Yoshi Amobi will unlock amiibo. Amiibo. What did I say? Amobi. <laughs> <laughs> Which I like. Uh, amiibo will unlock <laughs> unique weapons. Two per amiibo. One for the character and one for the rapid version of the character. Right, so you can tap a, a, a Peach, a Moby, and, and a both um, Rabid Peach and regular Peach. A Moby sounds like the name of a character in a bad uh, like Disney cartoon ripoff. Uh, okay, like, like, uh, like Shark's Tale? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or or uh, Ants? Get, yeah. yeah. Get over here, a Moby. Okay. <laughs> That's a Moby's voice. <laughs> here I come. If you have any idea of what a Moby would look like, yeah, yeah, please send your sketches into Nintendo Cartridge Society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com. When we filter through all that Sonic porn, we will, of course, find. Which we're still getting, by the way. We will eventually unearth your drawing oh, of a Moby. Right. Uh, also, on, also, today is some DLC for, the, for Shantae, the half genie hero pirate queen's quest all right for the switch and then on thursday august 31st the azure striker gunvolt striker pack is being released and is that just the physical release of that for the switch or i believe so yeah okay. and then in the eShop is league of evil and the neo geo game is zed blade uh so zed blade looks like it's one of those side scrolling shmups in a plane or spaceship or something um, and League of Evil looks like it's kind of a uh, platformer with um, like traversal elements that uh, look like guacamelee to me, where you're like jumping and then doing like a kick that propels you forward and then like taking a second jump off of that or whatever. Um, so kind of a guacamelee meets um, Super Meat Boy. Super Meat Boy, yeah. Um, or at least that's what it looks like to me. I don't know if I have. Uh, League of Evil, I'm going to pay attention to. Um, I, I don't know if I'll pick it up, but it, it seems interesting to me. Any Anything there, Strike Your Fancy, Mark? Nope. Great. Let's move out of the new releases. 
And now it's time for a regular segment on our show. It's time for 433. In 1952, American composer John Cage wrote a piece called 433, wherein a performer or a group of performers didn't play their instruments for 4 minutes and 33 seconds. For the purposes of this show, our instruments are talking about Nintendo. So for the duration of one performance of 433, Mark and I will talk about something not at all Nintendo-related, thus fulfilling the contract of the piece. Mark, let's talk about ice cream. All right. Uh, what's your favorite flavor of ice cream? <sighs> okay, well, here's a question. I'll answer your question with a question. Oh, all right, fine. Do we count uh, sherbet as an ice cream? Because you can go to an ice cream parlor and get ice and get sherbet. Yeah. Oh, can I ask why we're saying it like sherbet and not? How do you say it? Sherbert. Yeah, I pronounce both the R's. I guess that I'm. I am. I didn't mean that to come out as no. condescending as it did. No, no, no. It's it's fine. Uh, it probably is. Sherbert. That just sounds so stupid to me. Sherbet sounds like you're making fun of someone's like accent or something, though. <laughs> Sherbert. Sherbert. Sh- Sherbert. Like a rainbow Sherbert. Yeah, that's so stupid. Sherbert sorbets, uh, frozen yogurts. I don't know. I, I, I would prefer an ice cream. What is a Sherbet? What actually is I th- it? I believe you mean sherbet. I don't know. Uh, sherbet is, it's made with fruit and there's no. Is there no dairy? Dairy? Maybe that's. But then how does it work? I don't know. I don't know either. I mean, there, there are non-dairy ice creams. Yes. Such a thing exists. It, yes. And then there's also something called an ice milk, right? Yeah. Which is. It's like denser, right? Maybe. Will you answer my original question? Well, <laughs> I will answer your original question if you answer my original question, which is, are we counting sherbet? Yes, for the purposes of this conversation, it's all ice cream. Okay. Um, my favorite is probably... Uh... I would love if you were just like, Rocky Road. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, when I was a kid, I didn't like ice cream. I just ever wanted like the rainbow sherbet when we went to... Like 31 flavors. Mm -hmm. But now I guess it's... Baskin Robbins. Like salted caramel. Interesting. You're you're throwing up shrugs as you say that. Well, I still don't like ice cream that much. Okay. Like I don't crave ice cream. I Uh, crave nerds, the candy. I understand. But I don't crave ice cream. Um, My my father is a big ice cream guy. Loves it. Um, When we go to uh, Stone Cold Creamery? Am I making that up? Stone cold. Is that right? That's that can't be right. No, I think cold stone. <laughs> cold stone. <laughs> cold stone creamery. He will order the gotta have it size, which is the largest of the three. Like it, love it, gotta have it. Um, and I will be unable to finish my like it, and he will eat all of his gotta have it, and then move on to the rest of the remainder of my like it. He loves ice cream. Well, what when you order a like it? Mm-hmm. What do you order? Um, I I don't think I'm a, a a standard order like ice cream guy, but I will. I, I like chocolate, um, so I will usually go for something in like the chocolate family. A lot of times, it takes the form of like a cookies and cream. Mm, very good, yeah, because um, it's got a good like mix of textures. So I'll say cookies and cream. Anything with uh not cookies and cream, but. Jumping off of your cookies and cream, anything Thank with you. cookie dough in it. Oh yeah, I'm into. Mm-hmm. Um. So, so did you not do like uh, ice cream trips as as a kid? Whereas no, like, we did because lots of people in my family really love ice cream. I would just get rainbow sherbet. Uh, which is fair. Like it's it's all like part of it, right? Like that's just one of the options. Did you guys um ever do a? I realize I just addressed you as you guys, but I'm gonna stick with it. Do you guys ever uh have a Baskin Robbins lock-in where like after the store closes, you can like go and scoop up your own ice cream for like an hour and just eat as much as you want. No, is that like a birthday activity or like a church activity or like a school activity? It's something that we used to do in college that like um like res- the various like dorm hall councils would um you know have like you pay baskin robbins a certain amount of money and then like get a bus to go out to baskin robbins and just like eat ice cream after they close oh no i've never heard of that that sounds fun though it's fun uh, it just describing it right now made me realize how weird that is <laughs> are there any but see I've, i don't know that i've ever been in a baskin robbins that is large enough 
to accommodate more than a handful of people. No, and it is, I mean, it is an uncomfortable squeeze. And you know, this is a, a Baskin Robbins in Appleton, Wisconsin. So, like, it's large enough, right? It's not like a, a city Baskin Robbins. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a very, like, suburban environment. So, you know, even something like a Baskin Robbins can have more space. What but, did you call it? A lock in? Yeah, like a lock in. Yeah, I always feel like that's a misnomer. Yeah, because you can leave anytime you want. Yeah, you're not actually locked in that Baskin Robbins. You're not a prisoner of Baskin Robbins. <laughs> Thirty-one flavors uh, to life. <laughs> uh, oh well, we'll never know what we're going to say next. We we never will. Uh, Mark, get this: we were accompanied today by a troop of jugglers. What jugglers? They uh they did the three movements of 433 by not juggling balls, then not juggling rings, and then finally not juggling clubs. So there we go. <laughs> Mark, let's move into the news. Okay. Obviously, the big news of the week. Big news. Is that in North America, Super Nintendo Ent- Entertainment System Classic Editions. There we go. The pre-orders went live for Best Buy, Amazon, Walmart, GameStop, and GameStop, wholly wholly owned subsidiary, ThinkGeek. Right. Also Target. Oh, and Target. Um, <laughs> yeah. It uh, the first of these Best Buy went live while we were recording our conversation about Sonic Mania. Right. So late Monday night, very early Tuesday morning, we of course paused our recording so we could try to pre-order some in a panic and we were both successful that's right um ordering from from best buy uh and then amazon's pre-orders they went live very stealthily Mm -hmm. under like a kind of weird name and not the page that people had been watching oh i did not know that part of it yeah so it was um i wish i could remember exactly what the product description was Mm -hmm. but it's something with like maybe like tech land in the title or something weird and it's something that Amazon had previously released Joy Cons under that name, but so it went. That page went live, and nobody, people weren't really sure if it was actually the SNES Classic Edition pre-orders. But people are placing orders because there's no reason not to on Amazon. Right, you can, you can always just cancel. cancel it, and it turns out that was the page. And so that was kind of weird. That was like at like one maybe one twenty in the morning Pacific time that those sold out. Right, which means also the middle of the night for the rest of the country as well. We, I think, were lucky um, to get our Best Buy pre-orders being on the West Coast because, you know, 1030, it's not super late. Yeah. You know, we're obviously still up recording the show. Um, but, you know, if you're in the Midwest or on the East Coast, that's after midnight on, uh, on Tuesday morning. So, th- and because of that, there were a lot of complaints that um, they were, they did go up in the middle of the night and people weren't made aware that that was going to happen ahead of time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but on Tuesday, Walmart, it became pretty clear that Walmart was going to uh, set their pre orders live at 10 a.m. Pacific time. That's right. And they did. And it lasted for, I think, not exaggerating, like a minute. two seconds yeah. before they sold out of their first round of pre orders. Right, they get they ended up getting a a second round of pre-orders over the On weekend, Friday, I think, yeah. or something. Um, which lasted a little bit longer, but still, you know, it's an uh, an uh, fifteen minutes maybe. And then GameStop also set theirs live around ten a.m. It turned out that GameStop, at least initially, wasn't doing pre-orders online. They were doing pre-orders in store, and then later they put some online. Think Geek, of course, had a, their terrible, terrible super expensive bundles bundled with things that nobody wants. Right. Do you want to talk about those now? Or sure, do you want to yeah. talk about them later? Um, so the Think Geek bundles uh, for the NES Classic Edition, I thought were pretty stupid. But they did, they trotted those out months later. Like, you know, it, 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 it seemed crappy then. Um, but to bundle these, to bundle the Super NES Classics, with the the pre-orders with all this other like unsold thinky garbage feels real real bad especially when GameStop's site crashed almost immediately yeah and but 
if you got through to their error page, it told you to go to Think Geek. Terrible. Well, and, and also because uh, also this week, GameStop was talking about their Switch sales. And they were saying that, one, they are like the retailer in the US that has sold the most Switch. Yeah. But also, they have an insane... That's surprising to me. Yeah. It, it is surprising to me as well. But they also have an insane attach rate. Switch does. Yeah. Yeah. W- at GameStop. Mm. And, and not just with games, with, but with accessories and stuff. And so the Switch has been a huge boon for GameStop, not just because the Switch is successful, but because people are buying their terrible bundles. Sure. That, or, or just you know, buying like, other stuff to, like uh, uh, cases or accessories or whatever when they're there picking up their Switches. But yes, also their terrible bundles. Right. And so and I think GameStop, owner of ThinkGeek, saw how successful those bundles have been and how they can get people to pay more than the sticker price because the margin on a video game system for a retailer is not very high. Right. Uh, the margin for a like Mario coin box coin bank, you yeah. know, that cost twenty cents to manufacture. Yeah. And they're high. selling for like forty dollars in a bundle with a switch. Well, so you know, the, like the margins on that are insane. The uh the uh this th- maybe this is the one that you were referring to. I I've got them all up here. Um, is it the Mega Man helmet one? Oh, th- I mean, there's a Mega Man helmet one that also comes with a, uh, like an arm cannon, um, and the system itself, uh, for two hundred forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Remember, an SNES Classic Edition by itself is eighty dollars. Yeah. Um, or you could get uh, a Super NES Classic with a Street Fighter statue for the low, low, low price of one ninety nine ninety nine. Uh, or you can get this Super NES Classic plus a Breath of the Wild canvas for three twenty nine ninety nine, which means they're charging like two hundred fifty dollars for this like Breath of the Wild painting. Which it's l- insane. It's I I really for all of the like stories that came out of this uh, uh, the pre order fiasco, I really hate the Think Geek side of this. Oh, also we didn't mention because for some reason I just keep forgetting about it. Targets also went live about ten o'clock. Um. They immediately sold out. But throughout the day, like on the hour for a while, they were releasing a little, uh, like a couple uh, more. Yeah. That's and that ended at about 2 p.m. Pacific time, I think. Uh, so if, if you're going through your head uh, marking off like uh, a list of retailers that carry video games, you will notice that we did not mention Toys R Us. Who was on Nintendo's list of retailers that were going to take pre orders, but they ended up not doing it. Yep, and they have no intention of doing so before uh, the the units are available. Which I think is really smart because mm-hmm. it's just crashing everybody's websites. Yeah. And people are so angry about this. So angry. Well, and like, so I think there's reason to be angry. I agree. Or frustrated at the very least. I don't, I, I am, I get, I don't like it when people are like, Nintendo, when they blame Nintendo for it. So I think I think there's total room to be frustrated. Mm-hmm. This is clearly an item that people that people are really excited about, and nobody wants to repeat the NES Classic Edition, right? Where you were just never able to get one, um, and you never saw one in stores. So for a lot of people, it's like this idea that SNES Classic Edition pre-orders is your going to be your only chance to get one. Right. And I mean, we can dispel that right away, right? Because all of the retailers are supposed to have physical cop, physical units that are not already allotted in their pre orders. But even then, I understand the like frustration or because um, nobody knows what that actually yeah. is going to mean. And nobody knows. It could be two. Yeah. Like, yeah. and Nintendo has said, you know, we're going to make more of them and we're going to continue to stock them. But it's a lot of times difficult to take Nintendo at their word at this kind of stuff. Right. You know, they haven't built up that goodwill with consumers that they're actually going to be able to deliver. So I can understand people's apprehension about not being able to get one. I think the vitriol surrounding it is kind of out of control and insane. Yeah. And I mean, that may just be a function of the internet, you know, that someone's a little bit mad and that just gets spun up into someone being furious. Um, But yeah, it it was a little weird to see uh, how many people were um, like took... I didn't. I wasn't able to secure a pre-order to mean I'm never going to get this thing ever. 
You know what I mean? That it's like you know you still have you still have avenues. You still have uh, things that you can try. Well, when it actually comes out, it's yeah, not even out yet. It's not even out. No yet. No one has one yet. <laughs> yeah, that's you know you can still line up and get one if you wanted to. Yeah, just uh, Friday, September twenty ninth. Be at a Toys R Us or even probably a Best Buy, um, and get it then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I I guess I just feel like there was no, there's no way that these pre-orders could have been done well. The only way that it would have worked is if they had, you know, like enough units to meet demand, which was never going to happen for pre-orders. Right. Right. It remains right. to be seen what the actual units that they produce for in-store buying will be. But like, as far as pre-orders go, they were never going to be able to meet the demand for pre-orders. Yeah. And it was a situation where like, there was no good way to do it. The people who, a lot of the people who weren't able to get one from Best Buy or Amazon because they were asleep when they went live, Mm -hmm. they were saying, oh, we should just, or, you know, like Nintendo should have said everybody does pre-orders at 10 a.m. But that wouldn't have worked. That would not have resolved the issue because everybody would have been online at 10 a.m., including it would have have given scalpers or people that were using bots more heads up that they were going to do it. At least when they did it stealthily, in the middle of the night, it didn't give uh, people opportunity to prepare ahead of time right. to try to like scalp every unit they could. Yeah. Well, and this is also sort of becoming a self-fulfilling prop- prophecy now, right? That the NES Classic was in such short supply. Um, and, you know, I, I think we, I, I listened back to our episode about getting the NES Classic and we were there was like a moment where we realized it was a big deal that it was going to be an incredibly rare item. Um, but like we come into the SNES classic with that information already. Um, so I think, uh, scalpers are more on their game. Anyone who's even remotely interested in, in picking one of these up is more on their game. Um, you know, I didn't have a pre-order last time. You didn't have a pre-order last time. Um, you know, so it's, it's all, everyone's more alert about it now. I think that the fact that they're doing pre-orders at all yes. is a positive sign mm-hmm. because with the NES Classic Edition, I think one retailer did, and it was maybe by accident. Yeah. But you know, there but otherwise there weren't any pre-orders. Also, we are coming from a place of like We do have them. We did right. get, you know, each yeah. of us did get a Best Buy reservation. Mm-hmm. You know, who knows? Any of this stuff could get canceled at any time. On on that uh, subject, a- Amazon, um, when the pre-orders did go live, people were able to pre-order more than one. Um, Amazon has since announced that uh, any duplicate orders beyond one have been reduced down to one. And further to that, they said that uh, they may no longer hit the uh, release date for deliveries. Yeah, I think they sent an email to everybody who pre-ordered Mm-hmm. I haven't heard of anybody who pre-ordered who didn't get this email that said that yeah that the release the release date is kind of in flux or like the day that the you delivery will receive date it, yeah. the delivery date um which you know is a bummer but also you know I saw people taking screen grabs of their pre-orders for the uh, Super NES Classics that they were, got 99 of them um and you know to that person come on man like what what are you doing why are you, i understand it's like you're you're seize, you're seeing an opportunity and you're seizing it but that screws 98 other people who wanted to pre-order this thing. i think amazon and i think walmart was doing the same thing i think most retailers are doing the same thing where they're reducing orders where you ordered like more than one or in yeah. some instances two down to the minimum you know down to one or yeah. two and i think that's the right thing to do yeah but i mean it just goes to show you that like uh, you know, GameStop's website crashes. Uh, Walmart accidentally puts it up early. Amazon lets you order too many and then says, oh, we can't, we won't actually have them on time. That like, there are so many moving parts and even like the biggest logistics companies out there can't uh, like feed the demand for these things. So like, maybe it would, maybe it would help to have so many of these that they're in all, all the stores all the time. And maybe it wouldn't like, maybe we just have an insatiable appetite for super NES classic editions. That's my two cents on it. Also, uh, yesterday, Nintendo released fake Nintendo power covers in celebration of the SNES classic edition. I love these. There are three versions of the cover featuring super Mario world, Zelda link to the past and star Fox two. You can download them for fun. 
but attendees at PAX West will have the opportunity to buy some physical copies, which would be so cool. Yeah, it'd be, I think especially that Star Fox 2 one, because like the, uh, the Mario World and Link to the Past, those are obviously great games, but like that's borderline a cover that could have existed. Star Fox 2, though, never existed. Never existed. Gamescom, the, world, the largest video game trade show in the world, was held in Cologne, Germany last week, and there was a bunch of Nintendo-related announcements. Yeah, we're not going to go over all of the all, all the announcements because there are too many. Um, but let's just hit some highlights. There was uh, some Switch specific Rocket League cars that were announced. Mm-hmm. There's a Mario one, a Luigi one, and a really boss looking Samus one. Yeah, the Samus one looks really <laughs> really cool. <laughs> and for Super Mario Odyssey, it was it was revealed that there's no hub world. I'm okay with that. Yep. Uh, there was no real hub world in Mario Galaxy 2. Um, you're just like running around on a spaceship and it, if everything we've seen of Odyssey looks like you're just running around on a ship and then you get spit out in the world. I'm, I'm totally fine with this. We also saw some footage of Mario running around the Launching Kingdom and wearing a chef uniform. Man, this game's going to be awesome. I'm so and excited. And it's not that far away. <laughs> no. It's like two months away. Um, I, yeah, yeah, I, I it, a luncheon kingdom and Mario wearing uh, a chef costume. Uh, it's all so not tropey. You know what I mean? Like it's not. There are things that you expect in video games. You'd be like, okay, now it's a desert. Now lava. Now forest. Um, ice. Uh, but like, oh no, this one's about lunch. This level's about lunch, <laughs> Mark. Uh, there was a new arms character shown off named Lola Pop. She is kind of a clown. She's like a candy clown. She's a candy clown, and she can inflate, right? Yeah. She can, like, inflate herself to, I think it's a blocking move or something. It's something like that. Uh, yeah, I, again, this is another, like, Nintendo's going away from, like, the standard tropes of, like, uh, now put a ninja in there or a sumo wrestler. Like, no, this is a candy clown. <laughs> I guess that's kind of sweet toothy. So, like, Twisted Metal in that regard. I know it feels it feels more fresh to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so at Gamescom, Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition was announced. It's an episodic, chibi version of the uh, most recent Final Fantasy game, mm-hmm. and I th- it was announced for mobile phones. Yes, uh, primarily, and it's a twelve ep- twelve or ten episode yeah. game, wherein the first episode is free and the rest are some amount of money. Also. I don't find the chibi cute at all. No. I think that it, graphically it's pretty hideous. Yeah, it, it looks bad. Um, but it's all being released simultaneously, so it's not like you have to wait for new episodes. And it uh, retells the story of Final Fantasy XV. So whether that is like all of the game or if it's just like hitting the high points of it, you know, who knows. But the reason we're bringing it up because we don't normally talk about mobile phone games that aren't Nintendo, Mm -hmm. is that series producer... You want to take this one? Uh, Let me see. Series producer... Yeah, Hajime Tabata. Great. Said there was, quote, certainly a chance that uh, a version of the game would come to Switch. Specifically, I think he was talking about the Pocket Edition. Yes. In this interview. Uh, He said, quote, obviously we'd have to think about what the about what the meaning and what the significance of bringing this to Switch would be. You know whether people would want to play it and whether it would be the right thing to do for our team. But also at Gamescom, uh, Tabata teased, this was during a Twitch stream, like right. a Twitch like question and answer session. He teased, everyone on Final Fantasy XV, they love this specific console that sounds a lot like Twitch. You may want to think something about that in the future. So it seems pretty clear that something Final Fantasy XV is coming to Switch, whether it's the full game or the Pocket Edition. Right. And if it is the Pocket Edition, it would need to have uh, controller support patched into it uh, because the current version of it does not. It's all touchscreen. So who knows? If you're interested in Final Fantasy XV and you're holding out for it on the Switch, you'll get something someday. If, Probably. If Final Fantasy 15, I don't really know that think I have any interest in the in this uh, pocket edition. Yeah. But if Final Fantasy 15 proper came out on the Switch, would you be would you pick it up? Yeah, I think I might. I think I would too. And it's really just because look, it's if Persona 5 came out on the Switch, I would probably I'd pick be there. it up because yeah. I love playing games on the Switch. Yep, me too. Also, any kind of role playing game that's going to have any amount of like grinding in it. Oh man, give it to me on the Switch. I'll play for, you know, five minutes and level up just a tiny bit. 
Uh, Capcom is having a big sale on 3DS and Wii U digital games. Some highlights include Mega Man Legacy Collection, the first, that's going for six bucks on the 3DS. Down from 15. M- Resident Evil Mercenaries on the 3DS is only $6.40. Down from 20. And DuckTales Remastered on the Wii U is just three seventy five. Down from 15. There's a, you can check out, there's a, a whole list. The sale is in effect until September 4th. Um, so if you're looking for, if you missed out on any Capcom games on 3DS or Wii U, you can get them a little cheaper. One of the big complaints about Splatoon 2 has been its lack of support, like, on system for voice chat. Mm -hmm. You have to download the mobile app, and it's not all that, it's not a super great or seamless experience. That's right. But NeoGAF user Peter Cobra accidentally discovered that Splatoon 2 has built-in voice chat functionality over LAN play. So this is not something that had been patched in or anything. It's just something nobody has noticed before. Right. Because I guess people haven't been playing a lot on uh, local networks. Or maybe or... somebody noticed they just weren't uh, signal boosted on the internet like yeah, this. Yeah, fair enough. Um, so what that means is that the system can at least support voice chat while all systems are on the same network. Does this mean that the system is capable of supporting voice chat and is in Nintendo's electing to use Splatnet instead of a more robust solution. Who knows? Who indeed? We will never know. We really won't. This will never be answered. Um, but thanks, NeoGaf. <laughs> Fire Emblem Warriors has a release date in the West, and it's only a week before Super Mario Odyssey. What a weird choice! So the game will be coming out on Switch and th- the new 3DS on October twentieth. Uh, yeah. Um, it, it seems so weird to me that they would launch in such close proximity to uh, a game that's going to swallow everything around it. Yeah, I, I guess, are we counting it as a first-party title or as a... Hmm. Well, the only re- I mean, not that it matters. The only reason I'm asking is because uh, the rest of the year is really kind of slammed for Nintendo first-party releases. Yeah, fair enough. Except for September, I guess, which only has Pokémon Tournament DX. Mm-hmm. But, and the re-releases of those Pokemon games. And the re-releases right. of those Pokemon games. But, um, yeah, like, you have Odyssey. We still have Xenoblade uh, Chronicles 2 that doesn't have a release date yep. yet. Um, not a first-party release, but Skyrim is coming sometime this year. Yeah. So they're kind of running out of weeks. Yeah, maybe there is no good time. And really, just get it out before Black Friday, and then it's another another game that people could grab. and. Uh, for for the holidays, and also, uh, it it's one week away from Odyssey, which is uh, maybe something for Switch owners, but for th- 3DS owners, it's probably the big release for the month. Oh, that's so. a, that's a great point. I wasn't even thinking about. Well, yes, because September will be um Metroid. Uh-huh. Uh huh. October will be this, and then November is Pokemon. Pokemon, yeah. So, oh, also, uh, on the Switch. You can lower the resolution of the game to increase the frame rate to up to 60 frames per second. Uh, nice to have that option, I guess. Uh, I feel like those games always kind of have a, a choppy frame rate, right? Just because there are so many characters on screen at once. Right. And I actually think this sort of like dynamic scaling is really cool. And I wish more games did it. Yeah, sure. Because like <clears throat> sure. fr- frame rate a lot of times doesn't make very much difference to me. I'm not very sensitive to that sort of thing. Yeah. But I think for people who do value frame rate, uh, a lot, it'd be nice to have that sort of ability in more games. Yeah, yeah, because sometimes you're like, well, I don't need all these textures. I don't need them. <laughs> so, despite what we said last week, it looks like Capcom currently has no plans to bring Mega Man Legacy Collection 2 to 3DS or Switch. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to try to say this producer's name. I'll go for it. Great. Uh, Kazuhiro... Oh, boy. Tsuchiya? That sounds good to me. Sure. Confirmed as much in an interview with Techno Buffalo. All right. I, I mean, mean, they should. Uh, take all this with a grain of salt, right? Yeah, because they'll change their mind if if Switches are selling super well, and they are. And I'm not saying that it is, but it's possible it's already in the works, but they just don't want to talk about it because they want you to buy the game that's already out, yep. not the game that's going to be coming. Uh, however, news that we talked about previously that is coming true, but... Nintendo and Telltale, I know it's rare, Nintendo and Telltale Games confirmed the Batman and Guardians of the Galaxy games will be coming to the Switch. Uh, that's exciting. Um, 
we yeah we had been talking about this uh, last week and maybe even the week before. Yeah, there's been lots of like rumors and teases and listings for these games on various websites. So yeah, a- and so just on on top of the first seasons for both those games, uh, it is also either implied or they uh, explicitly announced um, that the second seasons will also be coming. It would be weird for them not to, um, but it's cool to see them. Uh, to see Telltale actually bringing their stuff over to the Switch. Yeah, I mean, they already had the Minecraft story, story mode. mode. Yeah, I guess that came out last week, maybe mm-hmm. the day that they announced uh, these other games were coming. Have you played any of these Telltale games? Um, I played uh, through like half of the Game of Thrones one with Sarah. Um, I think that's one of their... I haven't played any of them, but I think that's known as one of their worst ones. Yes, uh, and uh, but I was having fun with it. So I, it didn't rock my world, but... Um, you know, I played through like half of the Walking Dead as well, um, and I know that that is held up as like, you know, Telltale changed video games, and it it seems fine to me. I don't. Also, I've heard good things about the Batman one. Yeah, me too. Um, I think did Telltale way back in the day do that Homestar Runner game on oh, WiiWare? Yeah. yeah, they I, sure did. I played through that, but I think they've changed significantly since then. Yeah, that was in the uh, that was in their pre Walking Dead phase when they were doing like. Sam and Max, or Back to the Future, or Jurassic Park. These are all games that have like pretty bad reputations as Telltale games. And then Walking Dead happened, and you know their reputation now is for, you know, high quality storytelling. Ubisoft also reconfirmed that Steep, that downhill, um, racing game. Uh, what am I trying to say? Like uh, snowboarding, right? Sure. Like downhill, like winter sports game mm-hmm. is is eventually coming to Switch. It was announced way back at like the Switch reveal, and we haven't heard anything since, other than some rumors from IGN that development has been kind of troubled. Um, so I don't know why this game is coming at this point, but but it is, but it is. <laughs> and finally, a Nindies showcase video has been announced for Wednesday, August thirtieth, at ten a.m. Pacific time. Now that's a portmanteau for Nintendo and Indies. That's right. We had one of these um, in April or something, right around the Switch release. I, I feel like it was just before the the Switch release. So, so sometime in March. Yeah. So maybe yeah. we'll finally get some like a release date or more information on Stardew Valley or, of course, Pocket Rumble. We we can dream, Mark. <laughs> We've been shouting for these things. <laughs> but yeah, I, I'm excited to see what they show. There have been so many indies announced since the Switch has started to gather steam. And indies seem to be selling really well on the platform. Yeah. And I know I've bought more indie games on the Switch than I have, I think, probably ever. Yeah. So um, but yeah, I'm really excited. I'm excited about to hear more about the stuff that's already been announced. I'm excited to see if they have anything else up their sleeve announcement-wise. Uh, yeah, it'll be good to get like just kind of a nice shot of um, what, ki- <coughs> what kind of indie games, what kind of littler experiences we're going to have on this thing. You know, we were talking about all these big, uh, these big games coming out, but, you know, that all fills out the picture. Um, and man, there are still so many of these like outstanding things that we just need to, that we need to have cashed in from the last one of these nindies. <laughs> all right, Mark, let's move out of the news. <laughs> And that is going to do it for this episode of Nintendo Cartridge Society. Uh, Remember, if you could rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes, that would be great. Um, If you like the episode, you can share it on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Be sure to tag us. We are at Nincart Society. You can check out the Facebook page, which is just Nintendo Cartridge Society. If you pre-ordered an SNES or if you tried to pre-order or whatever your pre-order experience was we'd love to hear about it yeah so you can write in with your uh, uh pre-order horror stories to uh nintendo cartridge society at, at gmail.com. gmail.com um if you like oh uh, and then check back again on thursday we're going to be talking about uh the nes classic nine months and 20 days later um if you like mark and mine's opinions we write about comic books on retconpunch.com olivia duncan made our logo our theme music is provided by ape betty you can find more of his music on ape betty.com or by listening right now For my co-host, Mark Mitchell, this is Patrick Ellers saying Kakortok, Greenland. Thanks for listening. What?
That's a creative podcast network.